everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy Harris, and this is At Home in My Head, the podcast that explores life in the cottage at Woodland Corners. Today, I'm going to talk about the film Cowboys and a conversation about transgender issues that I had with a friend of mine while we watched it. But before I get into that, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supports this podcast and the YouTube channel version. I recently broke my first 1,000 subscribers, and it was an exciting milestone for me because I barely promote the podcast or the channel within the episodes. So it's amazing to me to see growth happening strictly from whatever organic mechanism is occurring outside of the actual content. Without asking people to like or subscribe, it just happened. And I'm glad people are finding value in this content. Some changes to the description information include my switch from Twitter to Mastodon, and the Mastodon link is now provided there. I now post most of my news hot takes, memes, and content from other creators that I want to share there. If you're looking for the steady stream of daily content from me, that's where you're going to find it. I also added a while ago a link to Kiva, which is an interesting financial support model where people can loan money to sustainable causes in areas that are unbanked or underbanked. The lender doesn't earn interest from this and can relend the money over and over again, helping many people with a single donation by repeatedly investing in different causes. I'm going to add an extra link in resources to anyone interested in potentially donating there, and I'll mention that I have a Kiva team which is simply a morale booster. I do not personally benefit or gain from anyone joining my team. If you're looking for a way to invest in causes and regions that you would like to support more robustly, then you can sign up at Kiva, whether you join my team or not, and start lending right away. And now, back to the story. A trans woman friend of mine recommended the movie Cowboys to me, which is a story about a trans boy and his parents. His father is accepting, but his mother is not. This episode will contain some information about the film, probably nothing beyond what you would take away from simply watching the trailer. But if you want to avoid any and all spoilers, then consider this your heads up. Midweek, I host a dinner with a couple people, and one of them will often stay to watch some TV, usually a movie or streaming series. Our connection is renovating my house. I make dinners kind of as a barter for the labor. I try to cook favorite dishes, and we don't always do renovation work. For example, I want to put up ceiling trim next, but with inflation and costs what they are right now, I haven't been able to buy the materials I need. So it's just been dinner and movie nights without a lot of actual working. Although I did get some metal dining chairs back last week that one of my friends reinforced with steel rods in the legs. So it was a nice surprise to see those finally get done. We all get along okay, but we don't all share the same passion for social justice or the same political leanings. And the house renovation and the living arrangements really are our only main connection. Other issues do come up with varying degrees of comfort and depth, but a lot of times it's just friendly dinner conversation or discussion about films or other shows we watch. So a couple weeks ago, I told the guy who stays for movies that I had a movie recommendation from a trans woman friend about a trans child and asked if he'd be interested in watching it. I said I could show him the trailer first. About halfway into the trailer, he said it looked like something he might be interested in, so let's do it. The one concern he had was that the trailer made it appear as though the film doesn't have a happy ending, which is the type of ending he prefers. Since I'd not seen the film yet myself, I just said I didn't know how it would end. But we decided to go ahead and watch it. I don't want to spend too much time talking about the film itself, because what I really loved was that it provided an opportunity for more discussion around trans issues. Let's just give my friend an assumed name here and call him Ron. Ron self-labels as conservative, although from what I've seen, his views are kind of all over the map. He's personally pro-choice, but you probably wouldn't know that from his voting habits, which I honestly think are mainly derived from his attachment to the conservative label than to his actual personal views. I'm not making excuses because, yes, this is still highly problematic. 
but I want to provide some context around who we're dealing with. Because when I say conservative here, it's more about a label he's comfortable with and feels a traditional tie to than to what he actually believes about people around him and his place in the world. I see him personally as someone who can be reasoned with and who has the potential for flexibility and change. He grew up in a Midwest farming family and has always grown up with guns. I think he sees this as a conservative perspective, even though he's met left-leaning friends of mine who are similarly comfortable with guns, gun rights, and gun use. When we talk about gun issues, we often don't disagree. And even though he was a card-carrying NRA member, we've watched some YouTube content that was critical of modern gun culture that he said made a lot of sense and with which he agreed. But he does still harbor a lot of the ideas he grew up with. Although traveling and being open has revised his thinking on a lot of issues or softened it on others. He's very comfortable with gay and lesbian culture, but when it comes to transgender issues, like a lot of people, he just hasn't had as much exposure. I think a lot of his thinking comes from not being informed rather than from a desire to perpetuate oppression. If you know me, then you know that I am very aware that a lack of intent to do harm does not give us a pass when we do harm. I'm just saying that there are reasons I think Ron can be reached and reasoned with. Ron likes to point out to me how, quote, he doesn't always agree with me, but, unquote, kind of how some people can't say something positive about a gay person without prefacing it with, quote, I don't agree with their lifestyle, but, unquote, like, I really don't agree with their lifestyle, but they really have a good point about the future of electric cars. For me, as long as there is movement and someone is asking sincere questions and really considering the answers, then we have a reason to engage. And all through the movie, from start to finish, Ron asked questions. Liberally and sincerely. He said right out of the gate that although he leans conservative, he wanted to try to keep an open mind. I honestly think that when I told him it was a trans woman friend who recommended this film, it actually made him want to watch it even more. Just for a little context about the plot, again, I'm not giving away any major surprises here. The non-accepting parent, the mother, pushes the trans boy toward behaving in a more feminized way. My friend had a visceral reaction to this style of pushy parenting and asked out loud, Why can't she just let the child be? I saw that as a good sign that the conversation could be productive. I had originally written that Ron had expressed skepticism about people even being transgender. But I don't think skepticism is the right word. I think confusion is more accurate. I used the example of intersex children who had non-consensual surgeries performed on them during infancy pretty clearly their gender did out despite the social, medical, and family pressure to make them into girls. Most of them were simply operated on and sent home with instructions to their parents to raise them as girls because surgically removing tissue on these children was a lot easier than trying to perform reconstructive surgery. These types of rights violations on our bodies and autonomy do actually sink in with Ron. They butt up against his personal rights and freedoms conservative position. I think this is true from what I've seen with most people generally when it comes to the history of how we have treated, or more accurately mistreated, intersex people. When cis people see these stories being told from the perspectives of these kids who have grown up and experienced the confusion and anger of being so violated and having their agency so dismissed, the response is often sympathy or outright anger. And Ron understood the problem of making all intersex children girls and why we can't force someone to be a girl with a surgical procedure that simply changes an infant's external physiology. He understood then that gender, 
was not about physical attributes like the shape or structure or even performance of someone's genitals. I used that as the foundation and springboard to point out that it isn't about what's between our legs, but something else that provides us with gender information and identity. He seemed to understand that. Also during the film, I told him that in some regards, the film is a bit of a fantasy. And in reality, such as here in Texas, we're trying to create a registry of trans citizens by using the DMV information on who has asked to change their gender markers. The request for names was made by government offices, not in writing, and nobody wants to put a name to who made the request. Just someone from Greg Abbott's office. This should concern every citizen. And I promise you, government overreach also butts up against Ron's conservatism. He said he wasn't aware that this was happening in Texas, but he's aware now. As a side note, I want to add that there is currently a similar push in Florida to create a government transgender registry using gender care records at universities. This is alarming in states that are overtly hostile to trans citizens and residents. At one point, I paused the film so that we could have a conversation around TERF suggestions that young girls will want to transition to avoid oppression of AFAB people, something the movie hints at from the perspective of the mother who, again, is the non-supportive parent. Painfully aware of her own oppressed state, she asks if anyone can blame a little girl for wanting to be a boy based on everything she hears about the inferiority of women, girls, and all things feminine. I noted that this is a big one for J.K. Rowling. However, it provided an opportunity to point out the obvious. Ron had grown up in communities like the one in this film. Midwest rural. And if there's anything conservative woman icon Sarah Palin taught us, it was that some women are more than happy to pose with a gun, don camouflage, take a photo with a deer they just bagged, go four-wheeling, do some fishing, and still present as very feminine and identify as women. Additionally, it's a fact that there are some very masculine women all around us who continue to identify as women. So the idea that a young girl growing up in a culture that glorifies particular features of masculinity is going to become self-loathing to the point of renouncing her gender doesn't hold up to reality. Even women who relate powerfully to culturally masculine pursuits still identify as women, and some continue to present as very feminine. To sum it up, admiring masculinity and male culture clearly doesn't confuse women into thinking they are men. We also discussed how the LGBT plus community has moved on and not taken their trans community with them. Once some of the civil rights goals in the lesbian and gay communities were achieved, a lot of trans people felt that there was a feeling of, we got ours and now the community can move on and relax. Some members of the community who aren't trans are as hostile to trans members as any straight bigot to the point of labeling as LGB and omitting the T entirely. At any rate, while it's not likely this film will be breaking any box office records, It was a good opportunity to open a dialogue and have a conversation in a cis space to try and promote greater understanding of trans issues. Ron actually said he liked the movie, and I think it did a good job with providing a divide in parenting between acceptance and non-acceptance, and why acceptance for one's children is important. I think on that level, Those are themes that translate beyond trans children to other communities where acceptance or rejection of children by their caregivers is a known risk. I don't argue with success. So if you're having productive conversations and you're doing it differently and it's working for you, keep doing what you're doing. I tend to look mainly for people who are sincere in their desire for understanding because that's where I see the most growth from my efforts. When I perceive insincerity and high levels of defensiveness, it's just too little return on the amount of time and resource that I know I'm going to have to invest to even try to make a dent. While there are people out there in the world who are open to learning, I'm happy to teach. 
but I'm not going to fight people who aren't honestly interested in an open discussion. Still, this was a good real-life example of how opportunities can present themselves to share information and ideas with people around social justice issues and how we can take advantage of these opportunities when they arise. I could have assumed that this movie wouldn't interest Ron and watched it on my own and never shared it with him. But I asked. I didn't push. I didn't insist. I didn't work to persuade. I just said it was on offer and it was up to him if he was up for it. Because it did seem like it had a lot of features he enjoys. The outdoors, supportive fatherhood, issues of personal rights and freedoms. I don't know if anything about his views were altered by the film, but I know he has more information now with which to form an opinion than he did before. And that can't be bad. That's it for this episode of At Home in My Head, exploring life in the cottage at Woodland Corners. Thanks for listening, and as always, stay safe, be well, and never stop exploring.